So now let's take a look at preliminary road design. So in, in this scenario, uh, you know, we just want to develop a preliminary road design quickly. Okay? Uh, we're not, we don't need the hard exact numbers with every very tightly rounded calculated uh, vertical curve and you know, everything else that needs to be encompassed into a road design. Right now we just need a quick layout. Uh, we need a good understanding of the impacts that it may have uh, to the cut and fill to the existing conditions, how big are my slopes going to be, you know, things like that. Uh, so at this point in time, you know, to do this task for a simple prelim road, you know, how long would it take you or your staff to do this, and what skills would be required to do that? So again, we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison. So with Civil 3D, uh, it's about a 10-step process, and uh, so that, fi that file's already got running now. And it starts off by sketching out that uh, initial path of where that road's going to go and generating an alignment. And then once you have that alignment done, then you can go ahead and sample the existing ground profile and then create a design profile. Now, for what we're going to be doing here, just to kind of add a little complexity to this, um, we're also going to be doing a secondary road with uh, an intersection. And you can see on the right-hand side, uh, InfoWorks is basically three steps. You just launch the road tool, pick a style, and then just click, 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 draw your road. So coming back to Civil 3D, uh, once you get that uh, secondary road laid out, uh, again, again, same process. You're going to want to sample the data, uh, generate a final road design, and then you can go ahead and generate a corridor. And so once you have your corridor, uh, you can generate the surface and, and basically create a 3D model. Now, to do that, you're going to need an assembly, which you can see it's generating right now. And that's going to give you, uh, you know, access to every little nook and cranny of the design of that road section, which, you know, for a preliminary road, maybe that's a little bit too deep in the information at this point. We just need a typical road section we can cut through and, and, dra and draft with. And so it is going through. And, you know, the nice thing about it is, you know, if, you know, you get a buy-off on your design, well, you're already halfway there because the road's already been given that much detail. But uh, as we all know, when you start doing a project, uh, the design you know, fluctuates and it changes pretty rapidly. And so going back to the drawing board and changing road sections and changing layouts and locations can be a little tedious. So maybe what Civil 3D is doing at this point in time, this stage of the game, is you know, a little bit overkill, if you will. Um, Right now, we just need a preliminary layout. We need to know exactly where we're going. So uh, right now, we're creating an intersection. If you've ever done this, it takes a little bit of cleanup and uh, you know, get that embedded into the two roads, and you've got to clean up your, your surface and your contours, uh, get everything done. Looks like InfoWorks is now uh, underway, and it's laying out the road. And oh, by the way, it's done. <laughs> so, you know, looking at, again, a, a really well-versed uh, Civil 3D user uh, was able to get that preliminary road laid out in just about 20 minutes, where uh, InfoWorks, well, you can see it took about 40 seconds. So quite a big difference there. And the end result, once you uh, have done both of these workflows, uh, in Civil 3D, you'll have a 3D wireframe of your road with uh, some, a surf, top surface and some contours. And again, if uh, this does you know, pass through and become your construction docks, you know, that's great. You're already halfway there. So that's, that's really cool. Now, on the other side, uh, in InfoWorks, you do get a 3D road. Again, you get all the lanes, the, the striping, curb and gutter, sidewalks. Uh, and you do get a logical design. So the software does take into account you know, uh, some rules and some standards that you can apply, some criteria, so that it is a logical design. It tries to follow the terrain and give you something that's not too over the top, cut or fill, and uh, replicate something that is physically constructible. And then once you get it uh, to a point where you're happy with it, again, that data can be brought into Civil 3D, and the profile will come with it. You can then dial in that profile, refine it, and get it, you know, exactly where you. Uh, want it to go. Now, I recognize that that probably went a little bit fast, so let's take a look at that again. And so basically, you just launch the road tool. Sketch out wherever your road's going to be, double click wherever the road is going to intersect, and then draw your secondary road. 
yeah, you can see it automatically builds the intersections for you. There's really no tools there that need to be uh, done to uh, refine that. Uh, again, it does clean up the striping. And, and again, it is a logical tool. And we do have the ability to get in horizontally and vertically and manipulate the design and the profile with accurate real numbers. So again, once you feel that you have reached a point in your InfoWorks model that uh, you know, you're ready to move forward with your project, uh, you know, again, that's where you can utilize Civil 3D. Civil 3D is going to now step up to bat, and it's going to take over your project for you. And then from there, it has the ability to go ahead and uh, process that data, refine your profiles, refine your alignment layouts, generate all your reporting, uh, generate your construction docs, generate cross sections, as you see here, things like that. And again, uh, the nice thing is uh, you're not leaving your InfoWorks model behind now. Uh, you can take that refined Civil 3D model data and take it back into InfoWorks and then utilize that over there. So again, you maintain that relationship throughout the entire course of your project. So again, let's take a, let's take a look at the quick breakdown of these two. Uh, with Civil 3D just alone, uh, it was about 10 steps, took about 20 minutes. Uh, in InfoWorks, uh, using Civil 3D and InfoWorks combined, it was about three steps, about 40 seconds. So in Civil 3D, again, you need a pretty sound uh, skill set, if not expert level, if you will, where in InfoWorks, uh, it was pretty simple, just a couple clicks and uh, very little training required to kind of get up and running on that product. Uh, in Civil 3D, uh, it was probably a little more detailed than you need for a preliminary road, but you know those were the steps that are required to generate that corridor model to, to get us to that stage, where in InfoWorks, it was just enough detail to get us that preliminary design. Okay? In Civil 3D, uh, no assumptions are made. Everything that was created was directly input by the designer, um, where in InfoWorks, you know, there were a few assumptions made um, based upon logic, rules, and criteria to help kind of quickly lay that in. And again, once we get that to a point, we can accept that and we can refine that information. But it does give us the initial road very quickly. Now, once you get to the detailed design phase, again, that's where Civil 3D takes over. And it really starts refining everything, applying um, criteria and standards for the agency that would be approving these plans, and, and it really just starts jumping off and tearing through your design. Now, um, again, you don't have to leave civil, uh, InfoWorks in there. Um, you can now take that Civil 3D information, move it back into InfoWorks to further refine and show a 3D model of what your final design is going to be. Again, to move forward with you know, other future phases or just meetings, uh, collaboration, things like that. So again, uh, you know, with Civil 3D, you get a detailed design model and you know, construction doc ready, you know, if you will, at that point, where in InfraWorks, uh, you get a detailed design model. You can then utilize the power of the two of them to create the construction docs and at the same time have an in-context 3D model of your design um, as you move forward. 